Sony's latest APS-C camera, the Sony Alpha 6700, is one of the best cameras that you can get today. With its built-in AI, you practically can't miss focus. But is that still true when we adapt a Canon lens? So in this video, we'll be testing out the performance of a 10-year-old DSLR lens on one of the latest mirrorless camera bodies from Sony. The DSLR lens that we'll be using is the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 for Canon. And we'll be doing this with a friendly couples photo shoot in New York City. So for our first shot, we have the couple in front of the Empire State Building. And I just wanted to have the building centered in between them without having it look like the building is sticking out of their heads. Meanwhile, to make the moment seem candid, I had them facing opposite directions. Now for a different kind of look, I wanted to go ahead and give a feeling of more intimacy. So how else can I do that? With going ahead and having them bring their faces in closer. When I'm shooting at 35 millimeters on APS-C, it goes ahead and compresses the background and really makes the space even tighter, making the couple even closer. So to help emphasize this, I went ahead and had them get as close as they could, almost forehead to forehead. For this next one, I saw that there was this corner that I can go ahead and use leading lines for. But since I was playing around with the spacing and playing around with my framing, I just went ahead and got different angles of the couples, individual and together. I wanted to keep out as many tourists as I could in my frame, so I tried to shoot a little tighter than wider. Now the autofocus was working way better than I thought it would. Normally when you mount other lenses from other brands, you would expect some kind of delay when it comes to autofocus. Most of the shots that I got here were just as fast as native Sony lenses that I have. Yeah, sometimes it may have been slow, but most of the time I haven't even noticed enough to complain about it. I was shooting with continuous autofocus with a wide focus area. For this one, they could have easily been standing still and standing shoulder to shoulder, but I decided to make it a little different and have it look like they were walking past each other, having their bodies face opposite of one another, and having them look a little less stiff by having their feet one in front of the other. I also tried to get a different perspective using the reflection of the glass. I could kind of see the reflection, so I went with it. But for a variety of our choices, I also included them standing still. So again, I wanted to have a little bit more intimacy, but this time I just wanted to go ahead and have the missus put her hands on his shoulder. Now, although their heads aren't as close as they were in the previous shots, but again, with the tighter framing, we can go ahead and fill not just the frame itself, but also the space in which we perceive their closeness and proximity. The Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter was released in April, 2013. So even after being 10 years old, the lens still produces excellent images. Now, this lens is mostly a favorite amongst the filmmaking community, but it is still worth looking at for photography if you want a fast zoom lens. I can only hope that Sigma would eventually bring this to the mirrorless system. Until then, for most people, I would just recommend getting the Sigma prime lenses like the 16, 23, 30, or even 56 millimeter f1.4 just because of the money, the weights, and the overall form factor. Now for these next few shots, we did a little something different. And this time our models became the photographers. I like the way that we are composed and I like the way that we are instructed. And you can really feel that uh, my wife and I are, are close in terms of being intimate with each other and hugging each other, embracing one another. And I think they really did a good job of putting that together. Our friends are familiar with using the Sony a6000, but this Sony a6700 isn't too different from that. Once she got comfortable holding the camera, everything was all set. Another thing to consider when you use a lens like this is how heavy it is. The Sony Alpha 6700 is a mirrorless camera that has a small form factor compared to the DSLR camera bodies that this lens was made for. But since this was the only camera body and lens setup that I was using for the day, it actually didn't seem too bad carrying around. Nor did my friends complain about this weight when they used it to take photos of my wife and I. With an aperture of f1.8, you're able to get more bokeh out of your images but at the same time, because you're able to open up your lenses that wide, it also makes your lens bigger and of course, heavier. When switching to indoors, I had the choice of using a reflector or an LED panel. I tried both, but I ended up using more of the LumQ Panel Pro, just because it gave a little bit more output. 
And I was doing this just so I wouldn't blow out the highlights in the background of the city and still be able to light up my subject. Towards the end, I ended up using less of the light and just went ahead and embraced the silhouette. One of the techniques of composition that I wanted to execute here was using a frame for a frame, specifically to put our couple in the center of a window frame to draw our eyes to them. Normally, I wouldn't recommend to anybody to adapt their lenses to their current cameras, especially for photography, unless they want to improve their manual focus skills or even save a bit of money on their camera gear. But this photo shoot has shown me that even if mirrorless cameras like the Sony Alpha 6700 exist, it's still worth adapting old DSLR lenses like the Sigma 18 to 35. But if you're more into photo than video, then perhaps you may consider sticking to native Sony lenses and probably just check out something lighter, even a little more affordable like the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter f2.8. But if you wanna see how this 18 to 35 performs on a cinema camera, then check this video over here.